Hello, and thanks for your interest in our presentation on smallholder livestock and aquaculture policy environments. I'm grateful for the support of my colleagues who are listed here and uh, thank, thankful for your interest in the topic. Most of you will already be familiar with smallholder livestock and aquaculture production systems. But for those of you who are new to the topic, we've included a few key statistics here to, to underline why this sector is so vital. When it comes to aquaculture, we're talking about the fastest growing form of food production in the world. The aquaculture industry is receiving significant attention these days. However, in many ways, the role of women within the industry is yet to be fully acknowledged, and this contributes to unnecessary inefficiencies and inequities. When it comes to uh, inefficiencies in and inequities in our global food system, this is not uh, news to us. The current COVID-19 pandemic has served to shine a light on the range of problems at global, national and local levels. Vulnerable individuals and households are being impacted, not only by the health consequences of the pandemic, but also, and in, and in some cases more so, by the restrictions put in place to control it. These learnings provide a crucial opportunity to reshape the agriculture, nutrition and health policy environments. And speaking of policy environments, this is uh, really the theme of this particular presentation. The uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, asked the Chatham House Centre for Health Security to assist them with the identification of policy practices that support sustainable smallholder aquaculture and livestock practices and value chains. To achieve long-term positive change, it was agreed that when we talk about sustainability, the policies and their implementation need to deliver across the triple bottom line. And that means across economic sustainability, they need to deliver environmental sustainability, they must guarantee social sustainability, and to be effective in the long term, they also have to do so through a nutrition and a gender sensitive lens. For this 18 month project, we had a number of steps and I'm going to run through them for you now. The first one, as you'd expect, was a, a review of the literature and uh, uh, document secondary data uh, in relation to policy and to conduct a synthesis of that review. We spoke with experts that are really knowledgeable about the topic, and uh, we conducted two case studies, uh, one in Bangladesh, one in, by, in Nigeria, and the rich contribution by colleagues in both countries greatly enhanced this study. We developed a secondary data tool uh, with an indicator list that was agreed to by case study participants. Uh, this study really benefited from a public consultation where we were able to get feedback from a wide range of specialists and also we established a peer review group that consisted of individuals uh, involved with multiple sectors across different disciplines and different geographies which was really uh, much uh, really added to the, the depth of the project. These were the preceding steps ahead of a national roundtable that brought together um, a multi-sectoral uh, group of participants to review the findings and also to discuss the triangulation of those findings and, how, and to assist with the uh, interpretation of them. This was all done to lead to the identification of enabling um, and or inhibitory policies and policy relevant options uh, that could be considered for future investment. Uh, in terms of good news, there was a little bit of good news. We came across two um, policies that we would like to share with you. First one was from Bangladesh and it sought to uh, deliver sustainable food systems and it's still underway. 
The second one is from Ethiopia, uh, which aimed to build a green economy, but also uh, incorporate a role for animal source food, uh, which given the topic, uh, the theme of our investigation was very good news uh, for us and for the producers in their country. We all know that policy work is not easy. If it was, everything would already be working fine. In the hope of contributing to positive policy development and implementation, we'd like to share with you six key findings. As mentioned earlier in this, in this presentation, the impact of inadequate policy support for and investment in agriculture, including aquatic and terrestrial animal health, um, this lack of investment over many decades has been laid bare during this COVID-19 pandemic. In addition, the lack of coordination between sectors such as health and agriculture uh, is recognized. Uh, we also, within agriculture, still largely continue to do our research and development in silos. And by so doing, we miss crucial opportunities to enhance the complex systems in which smallholders work and live. We know that climate change is already impacting food and nutrition security. We really must find ways to work with smallholders to ensure that climate smart agriculture also leads to key outcomes such as better nutrition, gender equity, improved smallholder incomes, to name but a few. In too many countries, senior decision makers do not have access to reliable data that meets their needs. Too many times data collection has focused on the needs of researchers or development agencies without involving men and women smallholder farmers and their representatives at local and national level. We all know that we can't eat money, but you'd really never know this if you look at our, our food systems. So how can our research contribute to developing circular food economies that are good for us, for our animals, and are also good for our environment? And finally, participation and inclusion have been buzzwords in international development and research for years now, but we've still not managed to actually put it into practice effectively in many cases. Might it just be that the growing realization of the growing climate crisis and the vulnerability of our food systems as revealed by the COVID-19 pandemic will be the trigger for real and sustained change? We really must work to make this so. So thanks very much for listening. Uh, once again, thanks to all who contributed and we look forward to your comments and to working with you to deliver inclusive and effective smallholder aquaculture and livestock policy. Thank you.